and from John 10, 1 through 10. Does everyone have one? So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me, by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. what's the real point to all of this? Part of it, I think, is there's a man in Caldwell that I'm convinced is out to get me. <clears throat> Every time I'm in a hurry, I have some place to go. I have a session meeting or I'm late for church and I'm scrambling to get there. I've got a meeting. I'm doing something. I'm driving along Nampa Caldwell Boulevard. If you're familiar, say, with where the Walmart is and you're coming towards Parma, you hit uh, Stewart's Restaurant on your right, you're coming up to DNP Arena on the left, and I'll be in the left-hand lane where the speed limit is 35, but I might be doing 47, maybe, 50. <laughs> and that's when the man comes after me. I ease up towards the Albertsons, and right then, a man in a tan Buick in his mid-late 80s slowly pulls the Buick out into the left-hand lane like a giant land yacht and comes a bit across so that the person in the right-hand lane slows down to make sure He's wearing a hat like my grandfather used to wear, those felt sort of hats, you know, that are kind of hard, you know, and it's got like this little feather in it. And he slowly makes the turn. And of course, I can like this, like, oh my God, it's again. Who is this man? And he'll, it'll take him a couple hundred yards to get up to about 15. And I'm wondering, how does he know? How does he know to do this? And then I wonder, what, what am I learning? What is the lesson here for me? You ever have situations like in, this in your life? A lot of times we don't make that leap. I, I understand. We don't make that leap to, hmm, I don't know what the lesson is for me in this. We just get angry. And that's when you get your road rage. That's when we get Expectation, you know, they say every expectation is a resentment waiting to happen. But I'll try to get into a frame of mind where I say, okay, what is, what am I, what lesson am I supposed to learn? Because I believe, you look at this John 10 passage, and I'm glad that it's paired up with the letter from 1 Peter. I think we, I think we misinterpret this a lot. For one thing, our Christian religion, our Christian faith tends to put everything in the future. This life really doesn't matter all that much. It's the future life. It's after you die. And so we're building up credits on one side so that one day when we're judged, uh, the gatekeeper or the good shepherd will say, enter into my pasture. And only the good sheep get in and the thieves and robbers don't get in. But that can't really be the case, is it? Because Jesus says, the thieves and the robbers get in too, doesn't he? In other words, everybody gets in. Maybe the message is, maybe everybody does get in, but we haven't learned the lessons. We're not looking at things correctly. We're not learning what Jesus really said. Then we said, well, okay, it's, it's life abundant, but that's in the future. That's in the house with many mansions, and I'm storing up treasures on earth that don't have moth and rust because these are the things that I'll need in heaven. But then why does he say, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly? 
That's the here and now, isn't it? That's not the future. That's now. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. And what does a life abundant look like? I think a life abundant looks like a life where we come to realize that the only job that we have, the only expectation of us, the only lesson that we have to learn is to love others. That's really all it is. I meet with, I've met with a whole lot of people who are close to dying for the last six or seven years. And I've been meeting with several people lately who wonder about passages like this. And I said this in my Easter sermon. A, a woman said, I've been a good Christian all my life. Is it going to be enough? And I think it's because we look at Jesus and say, if we worship him hard enough, if we believe in him enough, if we say enough times, I believe, Jesus, you are the son of God, then that gets us into heaven. But that doesn't give us an abundant life now. What is the clue here? Can I get you to turn back to the letter from 1 Peter that this was paired with? Excuse me. If you endure when you are being beaten after having done wrong, where is the credit in that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you and me an example. What is the example that leads us to abundant life in the here and now by the example that Christ gives us in that he endured suffering when he really didn't deserve it. I think it is the root of our resentments, the man who pulls out in the land yacht in front of me from the Albertsons parking lot who gets in my way. I have, it's our tendency to hold on to bitterness and anger when we don't have control over things and people. When we can't control our own lives, when we, everything I deserve, I, I don't know if you do it, my suspicion is that you do. I ordered my steak medium rare and it's medium well. I paid this much for this. My company hired this person and they're not doing the job. She took credit for my work. I planted seeds in the ground and they blew away. Insert your own particular thing in there. I'm late to a meeting and a man pulls out in a tan viewing. What was the example that Christ set here? And I understand it's so hard. It is so hard. But what did Christ show us was important? Is giving up our perceived rights. in favor of accepting people and life and situations as they are. If you haven't learned this yet, you will. Life is not fair. It's not fair. It stinks. And suffer an undeserved injustice is the worst. Undeserved suffering is the worst. I remember at the hospital we would have people get diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, and the first question we want to ask is, oh, was she a smoker? Because, oh, if she smoked for 40 years, then we can say, oh, well, there's, there's justice in there. There's some sort of a reason for that. But then you have people, for no good reason, suffering. And if you can't find an answer for that, we become bitter and angry and resentful people as we grow older. None of you, not me, but some people. We have to have an answer for that, and that's the answer that Jesus gives us. Notice Jesus, Jesus deserved, didn't he? What did he come to do? All he did was come and tell us that God loves you, and you don't have to follow all these rules, and they put him to death. 
I think about what is the wisdom in it for us today in 2023 in karma, how do you live a life without fear, bitterness, and resentment? I want to offer this prayer to you, the welcoming prayer. And I'm going to read it twice. And if you can look at your life, I don't believe that we are physical beings having spiritual experiences. I believe we're spiritual beings at heart, having an embodied physical experience. And everyone around you is just doing the same thing. One day when you review your life, as I think we all will, the answer will be, what did you learn? What did you learn? What mistakes did you make? What happened to you? And what did you learn from them? And you'll say, well, I, I played the role of a farmer. I was a doctor, I was a teacher. I was a lawyer. I worked in a hospital. What did you learn? Did you learn to love other people and to let go of your expectations? If we would say this every day, you would be a happy woman or a happy man. And it's almost impossible to believe we can do this, but welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome everything that comes to me today because I know it's for my healing. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. I let go of my desire for power and control. I let go of my desire for affection, esteem, approval, and pleasure. I let go of my desire for survival and security. I let go of my desire to change every situation, condition, person, or even myself. I simply open myself to the love and presence of God and God's action within me. On days when I'm able to do this, and I had such a day on Tuesday, everything that happened, I just simply let it happen. And I didn't judge it one way or another. And I just said, you know what? If this is something that makes me mad, there's a lesson in it for me. I felt like I was floating, coming down 95 past Gotch Road and into this little community. It was a train chug chug chugging along the tracks over there. And people coming out of what was Cappuccino, Calgary, and now the vault. The post office was busy. And everything seemed to just be right. And I had my little place in it. And you had yours. And everything was the way it was supposed to be. I met people. One person who was upset with me. And I just listened. And I didn't try to defend myself, I just listened. I met other people that were quite happy with things in their lives and they wanted to share and talk to me. I got to sit next to Glenda at Lyons and eat a nice lunch. I want to read it one more time and then I'll close. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome everything that happens to me today because I know it's for my kids. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. I let go of my desire for power and control. I let go of my desire for affection, for esteem, for approval and pleasure. I let go of my desire for survival and security. I let go of my desire to change every situation, condition, person, or even myself I simply open myself to the love and presence of God and God's action within me. On days that I don't do this, I'm usually anxious and jumpy and grumpy. The days when I do do this are the only truly happy days that I have 